10 this morning. John chapter 10, we'll read verses 9 to 14. John 10, verse 9, Jesus speaking, he says, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture. Amen. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. That he that is an hireling and not the shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. The hireling fleeth, because he is an hireling, and careth not for the sheep. I am the good shepherd, and know my sheep, and am known of mine. Let's Amen. pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for these good songs that we're saying, dear God, the special singing, the congregational. Yes. Uh, dear Lord, and we thank you, God, for each one here this morning. Father, we pray that if there's a lost soul here today, that you'll deal with their heart and life, and that you'll convict them, save them, uh, Father, before it's everlasting too late. We pray, God, for your people, Lord, that you'll help us to draw close to you in these last days. Help us to live for you, God, like we never have uh, before. Yeah. And, uh, Father, help us to be exactly what you would uh, have us to be, Father. We just want to thank you and praise you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Hey. Here we read in John chapter 10, verses 9 to 14, and Jesus is speaking here, and he says in John 10, 9, I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. Imagine me standing up here telling you this. I'm the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. But Jesus could say that, folks. Amen. Because he was God. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's what the Pharisees hated about because they thought Amen. they were somebody. Yeah. And here's this young man. He really he's a young man in his uh, 30s, early 30s. Some of those Pharisees were probably in their 50s and 60s. And he goes around and says, I'm the true vine. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Amen. I am this. I am that. The bread of yeah. life. All these different things. And they thought they were somebody. Verse 9, I am the door by me. If any man enter in, he shall be saved. He shall go in and out and find pasture. Verse 11, I am the good shepherd. And he says it again in verse 14, I am the good shepherd. Now, I want to preach today on the good, great, and chief shepherd. Amen. Because he's called a good shepherd here twice in John 10, verse 11 to 14, uh, 11 and 14. He calls himself that. And then in 1 Peter 5, 4, he's called the chief shepherd. 1 Peter 5, 4. And then in Hebrews 13, 20, it refers to him as that great shepherd of the sheep. So I want to preach on the good, the great, the good, and the chief shepherd. The Lord is our shepherd. What does that mean to us? Looking at the life of a shepherd reveals the ministry of Jesus Christ as our shepherd. First thing I want to say is, number one, the Lord is our provider. The Lord's our provider. Now, the great Psalm 23, we won't turn there, but a lot of folks just love that psalm. A lot of people want that read at their funerals, and some people have it on their tombstone out in the cemetery, or at least part of the six verses there in Psalms 23. But he says in Psalms 23, verse 1, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Amen. Amen. Verse 5, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies, Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. David is not speaking as a shepherd, but a sheep. God refers to us as his sheep. Now you won't find sheep being used as a national symbol like eagles and lions and bears. Why not? 
Sheep are stupid. Yeah. And they're stubborn. Man. You ever seen a group of trained sheep in a circus? No. Sheep are also filthy and tend to wander off easily. I preached a message. The message is on sheep a few years ago. This is a different message. Uh, this is on the good, great chief shepherd. But uh, you can't help but preach about the shepherd and the sheep and not preach about some of the same things. But sheep are filthy and they tend to wander off easily. We sing the song prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. Yeah. Folks, you and I have that in us. Yeah. I don't care how great a spiritual child of God you are. I don't care how much Bible you know. I don't care how much Bible you read every day. You study the Bible. I don't care how many verses you memorize. I don't care how many times you attend a church a week. You have within you a proneness to wander away from God if you don't stay by the stuff. Yeah. Amen. Stay close to God. If you bring sheep back, they'll wander off again. Yeah. They don't learn from their mistakes very well. Uh, I heard a man say years ago, he said, the only thing that men learn from history is that men don't learn from history. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, sheep are also dependent and defenseless. They're awkward, not very fast. They have no camouflage and not much bite to them. They are not candidates for king of the forest. Sheep also scare easily and are confused with little effort. In a panic, they have been known to plunge over the edge of a cliff. We don't need to go off the edge of a cliff. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. We've got Jesus Christ. These traits reveal sheep. Uh, they reveal that sheep need a shepherd, and so do you and I. We sometimes can be stupid, stubborn, sinfully dirty, and stray away from the Lord. We can be confused, fearful, and scared just like sheep. Folks, we need a shepherd, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Isaiah 53, 6, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him the iniquity of us all. Yeah. David said in Psalms 23, 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Our shepherd provides satisfaction for us too. That's what people in the world are looking for. They're looking yeah. for satisfaction. Amen. They're trying all and everything they can, but it still leaves an emptiness in their heart and soul. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when before I got saved, I had I had it made. I was in a middle I was raised in a middle class family up in Columbus. Uh, my mom and dad they had good jobs and so forth. I I, I bought a uh, I had a couple clunkers before I bought this Trans Am, but I, I, 18 years old, 18, 18 and a half, 19 years old, I bought a brand new Trans Am. I paid for it out with my money uh, working, and uh, I bought, I bought, I ordered it from General Motors. I waited six weeks to get it, a 76 Pontiac Trans Am. It cost $5,500, brand new, silver with black interior. I had, you know, I had a girlfriend. I had, I mean, I was unsafe. I had a girlfriend. I had a nice car. I had a few dollars in my pocket and everything else. I was doing stupid stuff in the world and everything else. Yeah. Had it made as far as what the world would consider having it made. Guess what? Just as empty and unsatisfied Amen. as can be. Yeah. yeah. Amen. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with having money or having nice vehicles. I'm not saying. I'm saying that isn't where it's at. Yeah. Amen. That isn't where it's at. It's in a person, and that person is Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Yeah. There is no greater delight for a shepherd than to see his sheep contented, well-fed, safe, and flourishing under his care. In Psalms 23, verse 5, David says, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. In the western United States and in southern Europe, Sheep ranges are referred to as messes, maces, M-E-S-A-S, or tables. Good shepherds provide safe grazing land for the sheep by going ahead of the sheep and preparing the way. They rid the pasture of poisonous plants. They track down any predators that might be in the area. They clean the water holes of debris and twigs that could entangle the sheep. I want to say the Lord Jesus Christ is our provider. Amen. He's our provider. He provides our needs. Philippians 4.19 But my God shall supply all your riches, uh, all your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. 
He provides companionship. Yeah. Hebrews 13, yeah. 5, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as you have. Amen. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. He provides strength and refuge in times of trials. Psalms 57, verse 1. Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. Are you going through some calamities? He's our refuge until these calamities be overpassed. Amen. He provides the way of salvation. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. John 14, 6. Acts 4, 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Amen. Amen. I'm glad I came through that only name of Jesus. Amen. 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 He yeah. provides the way of salvation. He provides the way of victory. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. 1 John 4, 4. Yep. Uh, Good. 1 John 5, 4. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Our faith is victorious over the world. Yeah. He provides victory. Why don't a lot of Christians have victory? God wants us to have victory. Amen. We should have victory. We should have abundant life and joy unspeakable and full of glory. Romans 8.31 What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, Amen. who can be against us? Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Romans 8.37 Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Amen. More than conquerors. Yeah. What a Savior. Great. He provides victory. He provides rest. Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. You shall find rest unto your souls. Rest. Amen. <coughs> Psalms. 23.2 David says he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He maketh me. That shepherd has to make that sheep sometimes. Yeah. He leadeth me beside the still waters. It is almost impossible to get sheep to lie down unless four requirements are, re are provided for and met. Four requirements. Four F's. They refuse to rest unless they are free from fear. Good. We're the same way. People will not rest if they're worried about family, Good. friends, finances, the feelings of others, and the future. Fear. Good. I want to tell you something, folks. I'm not living my life in fear. Amen. 2 Timothy 1 7, for God hath not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Amen. 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 Romans 8 15. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Amen. Now, concerning this coronavirus, let me tell you something. I'm not, you know, there's two extremes to it. You have some people who think, uh, think it's a hoax. Well, how can you think it's a hoax? There's 155,000 people that have died in the country. Yeah. Um, they might not all die to that. They sometimes they exaggerate the numbers. And, you know, sometimes these people have you know they've got heart failure, diabetes, and eight other things wrong with them, and they got a little touch of coronavirus. And they say they they died of coronavirus, and they got 19 things wrong with them for 25 years. Yeah. But it's not a hoax. It's real. People die from it. On the other hand, you got people that are scared to death and panicking. Yeah. I'm in the middle. Amen. I'm not going to be a fool and go up and kiss and hug everybody. But on the same hand, I'm not going to live my life in fear. Think about this. You say, well, there's, it's a big risk. 
you take a risk every time you come out of your house. Yeah. 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 Amen. Think about it. Yeah. You, you, you take a risk every time you get in your vehicle. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Do you know how many miles my wife and I drive every month? Yeah. Thousands. Every time you get in your car, your truck, whatever you drive, you're taking a chance. You know how many people drive under the influence? You say, you're trying to scare us? I'm just trying to get you to see that life is full of risks. Yeah. I'll give you quickly three or four real quick and we'll move on. you got to think about this stuff. you got to balance this stuff out. You're taking a chance every time you get in your vehicle. When you got in your vehicle this morning and come to church, yeah. and when you get here in a little bit, when you leave and go back home or wherever you're going, you're taking a chance. You know how many people drive under the influence of alcohol and or drugs on a daily basis yep. in southwestern Ohio, yep. let alone the whole country? Yep. You'd fall over dead of a heart attack if you do. You'd probably never come out of your house. But you still do. Yep. It's risky leaving your house. When you go to a restaurant, or you go to, you know, so I don't go to a restaurant. We, we order it and we go pick it up. Okay. Anytime you get restaurant food, let me ask you something. Do you know who fixed it? Do you know whose hands touched it? Yep. You know where their hands have been? Good. Folks, I'm trying to show you that life is full of risks. Yep. Yep. And I am not sitting around biting my fingernails, even though I bite them anyways, biting my fingernails, worrying myself to death 24 hours a day. I'm not going to be a fool, but I'm not going to worry myself, be careful for nothing. Don't be full of care, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Philippians 4, verse 6. Amen. Good. You go to a restaurant, we, we, we order food, we get... I go pick it up, or my wife does, or she don't want to go in the restaurant. Well, you can't go in a lot of them, but uh, she'll go in a few of them. She don't not go crazy about that. But anytime, anytime, I talked with a preacher a while back. He said he don't him and his wife. He said, I don't really like going to restaurants. He said, brother, I don't know who fixed the food. I don't know where their hands have been and what they've been touching or this and that. I said, brother. I said, what do you mean? He said, we'll go into this. He mentioned a couple of different places they go, they'll you know, like, go through the drive through And I said, well, brother, you don't know who touched that food either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You just take a risk about anything you do, man. Yeah. You ever been in an elevator? <laughs> you ever been downtown Cincinnati, had to go up one of those tall buildings, or it's Columbus, or wherever? You're, you're, by faith, you're getting in that elevator and you're going up 30, 40, 50 floors and you're praying to God that whoever made that elevator did it right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't even know who built that elevator. Yeah. You don't know their name or what they look like or nothing. Yeah. By faith, you get in the elevator. Yeah. By faith, you get in your truck or your car or your whatever you drive right. and you come to church, you drive around here, you drive over there, you drive over here throughout the week, come on every day of your life. Yeah. How do you know somebody's not going to slam into you, come across the double yellow line, and slam into you head on and blast you right out of, into heaven? Yeah. You go to an amusement park, get on these rides, and go upside down 100 miles an hour, hmm. you're taking a risk. Yeah. You say, well, preacher, I don't do that. Well, a lot of people do. Yeah. You don't know who built them rides. Yeah. A few screws or bolts come loose, and they come flying out of there, and Smash your face right on the pavement. You say, preacher, I'm trying to get you to see that life is full of risks. Yeah. Amen. Yeah, dear. You ever go swimming in the ocean? They talk about all these sharks now because some person got killed up in Maine by a shark bite. Yeah. Folks, you do what you want to do. If you want to go in the ocean, that's fine. But do you know how many people swim? <laughs> In the United, not just the United States, around the world. You know, there's some parts of the world they got pretty good weather year round. They go out swimming in the oceans and stuff. You know how many people, how many millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of people swim in oceans and bodies of water throughout the world on a daily basis? Yeah. 
But the news media, I don't know what it is, they have a tendency to be able to magnify yep. that one person that got bit by a shark. Yep. You know, now, if you, want, if you don't want to go in, that's fine. I'm not knocking you if you don't want to go in the ocean. That's fine. Whatever you want to do. But I'm just saying, we have a tendency to magnify yep. something. Amen. For, I've been preaching 42 years. I've been on, getting on airplanes for 30 years, flying around the country in meetings. You know how many airplanes I've been on in the last 30 years? <laughs> 30 to 40,000 feet in the air, honey. By faith, I get on there and trust those pilot and co-pilot up there in the cockpit. I don't know who they are. I've never met them before in my life. I don't know their names or nothing. Well, sometimes they get their name. But I don't know I've had a few reports here in the last few years of pilots being drunk. Life is full of risks. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to be stupid, but I'm not going to sit and just worry myself to death about this stuff going on. Yeah. I'm not going to do it. Yeah. So, Sheep refuse to rest unless they're free from fear. A lot of times people will not rest if they're worried about their family, their friends, finances, the feelings of others, and the future. Secondly, sheep also must be free of friction with the other sheep. Friction with the other sheep. They cannot rest if they're having constant conflicts with other sheep in the flock. We do not rest well when we are having conflicts with others, good. especially in our own family and in our church family. Now, I want to thank God as far as I know, we've got unity here in our church, and I praise yeah. God for that. Yeah. A lot of churches don't. Yeah. There's friction, there's stuff going on and things and that type of thing. A lot of churches don't. They're right here in southwestern Ohio, there's churches that have some friction going on. I want to tell you what, the devil's job is to get friction started in Bible-believing yeah. churches. Yeah. Yeah. He likes to get little fires started. And usually, fires are started and friction is started with words. Yeah. It just takes a few words. And uh, so, uh, behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Psalms 133, verse 1. You see, when we, while, while, when we have unity here in our church like we do now, we have power as a body. Amen. You have power. Everybody pulling in the same direction. Amen? Yeah. Thank God for that. Amen. Who wants to come to church with a knot in their stomach? Yeah. Thirdly, sheep must also be free of flies and parasites. We must be free of bad habits. If we're like flies, you know, they're like bad habits. If we're to grow and free, be free of worry. All right, and uh, flies. There's, you know, you know, what flies do. You know, you ever had food outside? You know, yeah. and you you try to have family over something. You go out the back porch or something, patio or whatever you do, and you try to have food out there, and here are these stinking, rotten, filthy flies. Yeah, and they want to land on the food, and uh, they're like little pests. They're like little parasites. They're like little nuisances. Yeah. You see? And uh, sheep must be free of flies and parasites. Sheep must also be free of the need to find food. They must be free of hunger if they're going to lie down. We will not rest as sheep, God's sheep, if we're spiritually hungry. You ever notice when Christ does the miracles there in the Gospels, the feeding of the 5,000 and the feeding of the uh, several thousand, there are different times. Or there's different accounts of it there in the Gospels. You ever notice before he does the miracles, he always feeds them? Amen. You want to know why? Because most, I mean, that's what human beings are. That doesn't mean we're carnal or wicked. But it's hard, it's hard to really pay attention to the miracles of God and get halfway spiritual if you're sitting there half starved to death. Yeah. You want your belly full. You want to be fed first. Yeah. And uh, the Lord knows that because He made us. All right? Uh, get in church and spend time with the shepherd and learn about Him. Only the shepherd can provide release from these anxieties. 
Jesus is the one who provides release for us. A flock that is restless, discontented, always agitated, and disturbed never does well. It is the presence of the shepherd that quiets down the sheep and stops their fighting. Spending time in God's presence will calm us down too. Amen. Number two, the Lord is our pattern and pace setter. Jesus is our leader and our example. In Psalms 23, 2, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Psalms 23, verse 3, He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. It says there in Psalms 23, verse 2 and 3, He leadeth me. Yeah. Yeah. Folks, God leads us. You know, sheep Amen. are 70% water. If they're thirsty, they need good water or they'll end up drinking at polluted water holes with parasites. You know a lot of God's people drinking at polluted water holes with parasites? Yeah. They don't get enough Bible to put in the left eye of a blind mosquito. Yeah. Where they're going to church at. When, when uh, the living water, Jesus Christ, is rejected, then they try to satisfy themselves at the polluted water holes of the world, which cannot satisfy. The polluted water holes of the world. Amen. Jesus said, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Matthew 5, verse 6. Think about this. Silver dew upon the pasture is a beautiful picture of still water. Silver dew. If heavy dew is on the grass and it's not too hot, sheep can go for months without drinking. The shepherd also leads to the paths of righteousness. Sheep are creatures of habit. If left to themselves, they'll follow the same trails till they become ruts. They'll graze the same hills till they're polluted with disease and parasites. The greatest safeguard of the shepherd is to keep them on the move and keep leading them into different pastures. When the shepherd opens the gate into fresh pasture, the sheep are filled with excitement and kick up their heels for joy. Christians can be stiff-necked and stubborn too. Amen. Just as sheep habitually and stupidly follow one another along the same trails till their ruts, we humans cling to the same habits we have seen ruin other people's lives. Good. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Yeah. Proverbs 14, 12. Christ is to be our pattern and our pace setter. He's to be the Lord, leader, and master of our life. Thirdly, the Lord is our praiser and promoter. The Lord's our encourager. He restores our soul. David knew what it was like to be cast down, dejected, and defeated. Sheep would get cast down too when they could, when, uh, when they would find a, sp a soft spot and could not get up. Cast sheep would get stuck on their back sometimes. They would lash frantically if they could not get back up and would eventually die from gases that would build in the rumen. They're part of the body, cutting off their blood circulation. Our shepherd picks us up when we fall. Amen. Woo! Hallelujah! Yeah. Amen. Amen. Jesus restored Peter when he fell. The life that is ruined by sin can be restored. Number four, the Lord is our physician. David said in Psalms 23, 5, Thou anointest my head with oil. Think about this. Sheep would be pestered by flies laying eggs in their nose. And worms would work their way up into their heads. For relief, sheep would beat their heads against the trees, rocks, or posts. They would eventually go blind and even die. Sheep run from flies and will eventually drop from exhaustion. The antidote for this problem was linseed oil mixed with sulfur and tar. The shepherd would apply this to the head, nose, tail area, and even the feet because the flies could lay eggs 
in the hoofs. During mating season, grease was put on the heads and nose to ease the contact of sheep butting heads. I want to say it is the anointing of the Holy Spirit yeah. that calms the irritations of our life. Amen. Good. He clears our mind. Most of the corruption of the world comes through the mind, the eyes and the ears. Paul gave us instruction on what to do about guarding our minds. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. What things, Paul? Things that are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, good report. When I turn on Fox News and I see them showing for the 55, 55th billionth time the rioters in these cities, click, off she goes, baby. Amen. Good. I'm not dwelling on that junk. Amen. Watching a bunch of whacked out weirdos. Isaiah 26, 3. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee. Yeah. Amen. Jesus is our physician. Hosea 6.1 Come and let us return unto the Lord for he hath torn and he will heal us. He hath smitten and he will bind us up. He heals our sin problems. Isaiah 53.5 But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Amen. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we're healed. Yeah. He heals our backslidings. Jeremiah 3.22, Return ye black, backsliding children, and I will heal your backslidings. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord our God. Number five, the Lord is our protector. David said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. For thy, thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Psalms 23, verse 4. What a shepherd. Mm. A good, great, chief shepherd. Yeah. To get to the rich pastures of the mountains, the sheep had to go through the valleys. This is the best route to the top because the valleys have the gentlest, gentlest grades and slopes and are well watered. Rich pastures are found here too. In the cool mountains of the summertime, the shepherd and the sheep are very close. The shepherd is constantly on the lookout for his sheep and for predators. He defends them with his rod and staff. The rod was a weapon of power and authority and defense. It was used in discipline by being thrown at wayward sheep or to lambs too close to poisonous weeds. You got to be careful what you see on the internet. Yeah. Yeah. Television. Might be poisonous weeds. Amen. Might be eating some poison. It's going to affect you. It was also used, the rod was used to examine the sheep and count them. He would part the wool, the wool with a rod. Part the sheep with wool. The staff was the tool of concern and comfort. The shepherd would lean upon it for support and strength. He used it to draw the sheep together in intimate fellowship. The lambs were lifted to their mothers with a staff. He would use it to guide the sheep by tapping them and would comfort them by getting them out of thorns and jams. The Word of God is the rod of God for us. It has power and authority and is used for our defense. Amen. Hebrews 4.12, for the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword, yeah. piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Yep. Paul talked about the whole armor of God. He said, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit. Ephesians 6, 17. Yep. 
sword of the Spirit. The Word of God searches us too, like the rod of the shepherd. It helps us to examine ourselves. The Holy Spirit is like the staff used by our shepherd. He supports and strengthens us, drawing us together as the staff draws the sheep together. Brother Aaron mentioned that in Sunday school. You think about that. You realize, you realize, folks, stop thinking about this. I probably would have never met most of you, if not all of you, Amen. if it wasn't for Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah. I would have never met you. I'd probably been dead. I wouldn't have got saved, but I would have never met you folks. Yeah. The common person of interest that we all have <laughs> yeah. is Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Woo! We got a shout yeah. run the eye. Amen. Yeah. What a great shepherd. Amen. He guides, comforts us, and gets us untangled. Sometimes yep. sheep, they get tangled in stuff. That shepherd and rod, to get them untangled. We get tangled into a bunch of stupid junk sometimes. Yep. Thank God for the rod and staff and for God's protection. Jesus is our protector who willingly died for us. Last of all, we'll say this, I'll be done. Number six, the Lord is our personal friend. Amen. See, folks, when he saved you, he didn't say, well, I'm not going to have nothing to do with you now. I saved your soul. That's good enough, ain't it? See you at the judgment seat, buddy, sister. No. He wants to be our personal friend throughout this lifetime. Yeah. A man that, uh, man, let's see, uh, a man that have friends but show himself friendly, and there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Amen. Proverbs 18, 24. John 15, 15. Henceforth I call you my not servants, call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends for all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. John 15, 15. John 10, 3. To him the porter openeth. And the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by 